Bucks Community Television. Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today. and coaches do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes fortunately for you there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that introducing small player big play small player big play app provides young athletes parents and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform the app allows users to connect with friends make new friends 
Create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today. TV Friday Night Football, the Backyard Brawl. Why I'm missing Burks Catholic, Bruce Badgley, alongside Kerry Moyer. Kerry, biggest game in Burks County this year by far. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, we kind of been building to this all season. You know, you and I uh, got a chance to catch uh, the, uh, you know the Section One showdown last week with with Exeter and Governor Mifflin, but. Uh, I, I don't think anybody can doubt it. You know, <laughs> everybody's uh, hyped tonight. But this is for all the marbles. You know, we got two teams. They're both undefeated in Section 2. Uh, for the foreseeable future, the last time they're going to be playing with realignment, you know, the backyard brawl. Why missing coming in tonight to Burke's Catholic? Uh, the <laughs> Burke Section 2 title on the line. Um, you know, all kinds of playoff implications for both these teams coming up. Uh, it doesn't get any bigger than this. Yeah, I mean, forgetting, you know, there, there's both teams are have the number one seed right now in the district playoffs, so they're each playing for a possible home game in the postseason. Uh, the Keeley Wolfram Trophy, the Section 2 uh, Trophy, and then obviously, you know, the, the bragging rights of, you know, having that trophy for possibly two years. Pretty incredible um, that it, it, you know, it all comes down to this one game with these two teams who, quite honestly, all season long, you know, have taken on all comers. Why I'm missing, played a really tough schedule. We saw them against uh, Pottsville week two. Uh, Heck of a Pot game. Yeah, Pottsville <laughs> taking them a double overtime. Um, I got an opportunity to see them against North Schuylkill earlier this year. Uh, you know, they, they beat Fleetwood uh, pretty handily now. You know, coming up to Burks Catholic. And Burks Catholic, what can you say about their schedule? I mean, Exeter, Central Dolphin, Malvern Prep. I mean, you know, they're taking on all comers, both these teams. Yeah, and when you look at it and look at those games that count into the power rankings, you know, beating an Exeter, beating a Boyertown, they're big teams. And, uh, you know, when you look at their, their out of uh, the area schedule, playing a Malvern Prep. I mean, they certainly didn't pick uh, pick a light schedule. You know, as you said, you know, playing Central Dolphin, Malvern Prep, and then playing McDonough again. We yeah, saw McDonough, that game right. here last year. I mean, that, it's, a, it's a no joke hardcore team out of Maryland. So, uh, you know, both of these teams are primed. I, I think we're pretty relatively healthy. I think that was kind of, you know, some of the story. You know, earlier in the season, you know, with uh, with BC, and we saw some injuries, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> it, it just doesn't get any bi bigger than this and you know it's uh you know late october and uh you know it's a great night for football here you know in, in berks county and uh you know your favorite uh you know uh monuments back there the pagoda we can see it across and uh it's just going to be it, this is going to be wild i mean it's a packed packed house you know i know you were here early setting us up you know uh when i got here i mean you know everybody's already parking in the grass you know so it's it's just it, this place is packed you know it, you know we'll get some shots here going around then i mean the whole outside of the track is lined there's no it's standing room only at this point uh like you said this is the biggest game you know tonight it's huge absolutely um you know both of these teams uh like we talked about so much on the line um and you know quite honestly the biggest game in in berks county uh this year i think i mean there's a lot of been a lot of things been going around on social media on what is you know the biggest rivalry game you know in berks county and you know around the area clearly this uh you know this uh matchup here uh for so much at stake 
um, and the last game of the season always means so much. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, you know, you know, of course there's a lot of, you know, great games out there. We've seen a lot of great games, you know, a lot of, you know, title and playoff implications. But to come down to the last week of the regular season to have the Burke Section 2 title on the line, both these teams undefeated in the section, both of them, you know, in 3A, 4A, respectively number one in the district. I mean, everything's at stake tonight for both of these teams. And, of course, you can see we're al fresco. Uh, you know, we're out with the fans. Uh, we've got stuff being passed back and forth here. Uh, you know, and, and with this packed house, I'm sure you'll probably hear some of the fans as we go through the game. But, you know, uh, you couldn't ask for a, a better night. Um, the elements are sure not going to decide this one. It's going to be both teams out on the field uh, deciding, you know, who's going to win this matchup. And, uh you know, we look for a really tremendous football game. Uh, you know, Burke's Catholic, uh, they've, like you talked about, they finally come in healthy. Uh, they came into the season without their starting quarterback, Brad Hoffman. When they get him back, they lose both of their starting running backs to injury. Uh, so finally here at this particular point of the season, you know, they're healthy. Why am I missing? Well, they lose their starting quarterback, Zach Zekman, you know, uh, first game, first quarter, or, or at least the first half there. So uh, Jordan Allman has come in. He's played well all season. That senior leadership of Max Herlman and Evan Nadrowski, uh, you know, quite the one-two punch, you know, in there. And uh, so we're about ready for the coin toss, you know, down on the field. Um, we're expecting that uh, Anthony Myers um, is going to uh, be part of this uh, coin toss. You know, Anthony, it was funny. I was talking to some of the coaches on the field uh, before the game, and, you know, we were mentioning that, uh, you know, last year uh, they were clearing off the field, um, you know, on a, on a Friday night from snow. And uh, the following day then um, Anthony was able to uh, have that special game where he uh, scored a rushing touchdown. And there's Anthony Myers making his way. How emotional is that? How emotional is that? Now, a lot of applause, a lot of cheers from both sides. Again, you know, a lot of these guys are our friends, you know, have played against each other coming up through and uh, just a uh, special, special moment. I know talking to uh, Anthony's dad before the game, it was a pretty emotional moment. Looks like Ohio has won the toss and deferred. Burks Catholic is going to receive, and uh, they'll be going uh, right to left on our screen. And there's Anthony Myers. How emotional is that? Has his own movement, 17 strong. Yeah. Well, and Bruce, you know, really, you've kind of been there all the way through, and you know, chronic, chronicling, you know, the, you know, his progress, you know, over the course of the last year, being there, and uh, you know, to see it kind of come, you know, full circle tonight for him is just uh, great. Yeah. Okay, it looks like we're getting ready for our national anthem. and officials. Give them your guidance and protection and allow your spirit to reign in their hearts. And gracious Lord, when the game of life is over, may they win the most important victory, eternal life with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and direct your attention to our nation's colors. As we honor America, serving our country, protecting us, both at home and overseas, with the playing of our national anthem by the Wyoming Area High School Band.
Okay, let's get it on. Burke's Catholic. Why am I missing? Thanks for joining us here on BCTV Friday Night Football, gang. I already, I already have somebody. I do. I do. Good to see you, my man. All right. Brooks Catholic to receive carry. I can tell you one thing, Kerry. This is the best smelling stadium in Berks <laughs> County. I mean, the barbecue that's going on down there I'll tell is you, incredible. Steal my thunder, Bruce, and uh, it's one of the things, and again, can't say enough about the support of, of my wife, Kel, and uh, she's here. And, uh, we both kind of uh, agree, like, the uh, best cheeseburgers going here in, uh, in Ber or any of the stadiums we've been. And uh, so we uh, had to partake in those. Knights of Columbus has their... Uh, uh, their stand down there and uh, just look down at Bruce this, this is wild there is not a seat and the standing room only I mean it's it's three four deep at the fence at spots down here between the home bleachers and, and the concession stands it's just wall to wall people it's just going to be wild atmosphere here tonight Bruce well wild atmosphere and I'm blind as a bat as I forgot to get my um, my uh Binoculars out there, and uh, we are underway. <laughs> Nolan Larkin covered that up. Kerry, we're ready for some football. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll be talking about Nolan a lot tonight. Uh, you know, of course, uh, big games early on, uh, out a couple of weeks for injury, and, uh, you know, like you uh, talked about in pregame a little bit, you know, Abdul McFoy kind of had that ankle thing going on earlier in the season. Both of those guys healthy, and, uh, Got first and 10 here, your illuminated down marker, Bruce. First and 10 from the 25, and here we go. All right, Brad Hoffman. Scott McFoy, and it looks like C.J. Carwell starting, and he is just blasted there. That was number 59 for a while, Jack Feitner. In yeah. there quickly. Yeah, it's a uh, number one way to uh, you know blow up that run game there is with penetration and uh, you know that left side of uh, Wyo's defense there did a great job. All and right, so going to be second and about eleven, just underway here. Thanks for joining us, BC TV Friday Night Football. Half an hour, there's McFoy. Oh, and he's breaking it out to the outside. And he's corralled out of bounds. Max Hurlman forced him out of bounds, but not before McFoy picked up the first down all the way out to about the 40-yard line. Two names that we're going to talk about a lot tonight. And, uh, you know, that's when uh, Abdul McFoy gets dangerous. We talked about this when we had BC earlier in the year. You know, when he can get outside, uh, when you can get him in space, that's when he becomes dangerous. And, you know, you look uh, back, you know, we had week one here when Exeter was here. They did a great job all night keeping the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the contain and not letting guys bounce. And then we saw two touchdowns, you know, with, with Larkin and McFoy. And when McFoy gets outside, that's when he gets dangerous. Carwell up the middle and picks up about, wow, a good six, seven yards there. Yeah, and Carwell's another guy that's been a, been a producer, you know, this year for, for Burke's Catholic. And, uh, you know, when you, you look at the, the rushing, you know, McFoy's coming into tonight with 76 uh, carries, 653 yards, and that 8.6 average, again, the big plays. Carwell's got 36 carries for 253 yards and a seven-yard average coming in. So Carwell's certainly a, a big part of this run game for BC. McFoy. Oh, and the, he's corralled again by number 59, Jack Feitner. No, that was a great job by Feitner getting in again. You know, penetration's the way that you can blow up the run game early there. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, so Wyo has done some really nice things here so far on defense, getting penetration, you know, kind of controlling that line of scrimmage, you know, with the exception of, uh, you know, McFoy getting around the end. Uh, they've done a pretty good job so far. So third and about eight, eight and a half. Opening possession of the game, no score, 10 minutes left in the first quarter. So here's Hoffman. 
And he's given that to, boy, I was trying to think, number nine, I believe. Justin Smalls, yeah, that's right. Uh, kind of on that uh, end around there, and it is gonna bring up a punting situation for Burks Catholic. And you know, this is gonna be very interesting. Uh, you know, special teams carry. These teams are so closely matched. Special teams are gonna be just important. Now it's one third of the game and uh, you know, either a, a you know, opportunity or a miscue, um, you know, either way could, you know, possibly decide this at the end. Max Hurlman in deep. He gets it on the run and he breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, but he's corralled in at about the 40, or excuse me, the 37 yard line where Wyatt will take over first and 10. Opening possession of the game. We've got 9-13 left here in the first quarter. No score here from the Farino Sports Complex on the campus of Berks Catholic High School. Thanks for stopping by BCTV Friday Night Football, our last broadcast of the year. It's sure a big one, Kerry. Yep, absolutely, and nice job there by Herman. Made the first guy miss, second guy miss. Great job by BC on their punt coverage. We now uh, see what Wyo can do on offense. Nadrowski for about one, maybe two. Yeah, so we were kind of there for the transformation, and then uh, shout out to Coach O'Neill. <laughs> I put out uh, on Twitter earlier today, and for anybody, if you're watching us, uh, I have a couple of people already. You know, just reply to one of my tweets or shoot a DM where you're watching from and uh, we'll announce it on the air. But Coach O'Neill said, you know, uh, I'll be uh, watching from the sidelines. But when we had that game up at Pottsville, he, there was one secret he didn't let us know, and that was about uh, Nadrowski going into the backfield. Herman breaks free. He is gone. 60 yards. Touchdown, Max Herman. And why am missing up six to nothing? Talked about it earlier, you know, I said we're going to say those guys' names a lot with uh, McFoy and then, of course, over on Wyo's side, Max Herlman and, uh, you know, our, our buddy Daryl Daniel, I think, uh, you know, talked about him earlier in the year. He's kind of a Swiss Army knife. He can do anything for you from just about any position, just an incredible athlete, you know, and coming in, he's leading the team in rushing, leading the team in receiving, and leading the team in scoring, and he's uh, already put uh, points on the board for Wyo tonight. So 60 yards for Herlman, oh my. Snap down, boot is good. Yeah, I think when you look back at Herlman's stats, you know, and again, stats are stats, but you want to watch the film on this young man too. It's, yeah, it, the yards he gets in a game are usually on so few touches. I mean, he's putting up incredible numbers and, you know, he's just got big play capability all over him. Wow, just that quick, seven to nothing. Why am I missing? Um, you know, you were talking about, uh, you know, people that are watching the game. I uh, got a text from uh, from Ross Tucker. And, uh, you know, Ross said he's going to be uh, uh, watching up there in uh, uh, West Point. I guess he's doing the Army football game tomorrow. So uh, couldn't be here, but uh, he was uh, very pleased that he could watch our game online. Uh, you know, we're on cable, we're online, and we're on demand. So, uh, you know, and so many uh, thank yous down on the field tonight from a lot of people that, uh, you know, friends and relatives weren't able to, you know, get to the game but are able to watch it. So uh, we're very, very happy to be able to bring this game to all the fans of these schools yeah. and high school football in general. Yeah, and I think we'll reflect on that a little bit, you know, as the action allows tonight. But, again, you know, appreciate Ross, uh, a true professional, tuning in to catch his uh, Why Missing Spartans tonight. A little pooch kick there by Cirilli, and that looks like that is Caccioni. Looks like we've got uh, some kind of an emergency in the stands here, unfortunately. Okay, we'll be back to the broadcast. We have some folks kind of moving by us here that have some medical experience. No one Larkin carrying it there. Quite honestly, it's... Uh, it looks like we got a flag. 
So tonight's officiating crew uh, to put out on tour as well. Uh, the referee tonight is uh, Scott Widener, the rest of his crew. Uh, Kevin Redkay, Mike Holloway, Steve Davis, Francesco Sanchez, and uh, field judge is Kirk Singleton. So again, uh, Scott Widener is uh, the referee and it's his crew tonight, the rain football officials here for the Why I'm Missing at Burke's Catholic Backyard Brawl. Okay, uh, back to action here. Uh, somewhat difficult to concentrate on uh, the game there, unfortunately, for a few moments, uh, fans. All right. Okay, so we have penalty. We All right, first and 10, Brooks Catholic. Ball's on the 30-yard uh, line. Why am missing ahead? 7-0, eight minutes to go. See what Burks Catholic can get going on offense here. First pass is knocked down. Number 11, Darren Bruner. He was our MVP for why I'm missing for that Pottsville game. He got up and swatted that one away. Yeah, very J.J. Watt-esque there and getting up and uh, swatting that down. Going back to, um, you know, talking about Hurlman and that sc scoring drive for Wyo, it was two plays that eclipsed 63 yards and uh, only took 41 seconds off the clock. Sitting here, still in the first quarter, 7.52 left. Um, visiting Wyo missing Spartans are up 7-0 over the Burks Catholic Saints. All right, here's Larkin around the left side, looking for some room. He's breaking free. Oh, look at him just avoid tackles out to near midfield. He just snaked his way through that defense. You know, and, and Noah Larkin, I mean, he's an incredible athlete. He's also a track and field athlete. And, uh, you know, I know with the, the Burks Combine this spring that, you know, Abdul McFoy was, you know, clocked as the fastest. And uh, Nick Singleton from Governor Mifflin was, was second fastest. But uh, uh, when you're talking about playing on the field and football speed, uh, Noah Larkin's right up there in the conversation. All right, so first down, Burks Catholic, their own 49-yard line, they're trailing. Seven to nothing against Y missing. And here's Larkin again around the end. Maybe two or three. Went to the short side that time. Yeah, and for those tuning in, you know, talk about, you know, just briefly each week, you know, it's not the uh, the skinny hashes that you see on a Sunday afternoon. We've got the wide high hashes here in high school football. So, you know, when that uh, ball's lined up on the hash, you got, uh, you know, a short side of the field and a very long side of the field. They ran the short side of the field that time. A couple yards for Larkin, but... I think what we're seeing here a little bit different already in this series compared to the last series is, uh, you know, Burks Catholic's offensive line starting to get their feet underneath them a little bit. There's Carwell, penalty flag, and he gets a couple. What I think uh, it is safe to say is both of these teams are playing hard. And again, I think, you know, both coming in relatively healthy and th they're banging. They are banging. I mean, the intensity. Oh, looks like uh, illegal shift on BC. So that's going to back them up five. Going to make it about seven, or excuse me, second down and 12 from their own 47-yard line. You know, while we have a quick second here talking about, we talked a little bit about in the pregame show, Burke section two, of course, Burke's Catholic's undefeated, uh, you know, and also beat some teams, uh, you know, the Exeters and the Boyer Towns earlier this season. Hoffman to McFoy, and he had nowhere to go, nowhere to go. Number 14 there for the stop, Jevin Tranquillo. You know, and, um, you know, six and three overall coming in. Again, we talk about, you know, the losses. They lost to Central Dolphin 31 to six. Of course, you know, Central Dolphin, a powerhouse team. You know, McDonough out of Maryland and uh, Malvern Prep. You know, coming in, PA District 3, power ranking. They're number one, uh, you know, in 4A at 6 and 1. All right, here's Hoffman. Under center. Back to pass. That's Caccioni. Maybe back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's going to bring up fourth down. So big set of downs there by uh, Wild to... Uh, Stop Burke's Catholic, and yeah. so it's going to set up a punting situation. You know, and Caccione is one of the playmakers. You know, when we've had Burke's Catholic games earlier in the year, certainly said his name a lot. You know, he's the leading receiver coming in for Burke's Catholic. Uh, 
and uh, nice job there by the wide missing defense to force the punt. Tyler Givens back to kick for BC. Good snap. And that's Max Herleman under it. Always dangerous, but he's corralled for not much of a gain there. No, you're you're exactly right, Bruce. Max Herleman is dangerous. Again, just a weapon, you know, in the run game, in the passing game, and in the receiving game. Uh, I would have to say with those first two punts tonight by BC, their, their punt coverage has done a really nice job of uh, keeping them contained. All right, so it's first and 10 for Weil. Ball's going to be on about the uh, 28-yard line. They're ahead, 7 to nothing. We've got 5 minutes, 34 seconds left here in the opening quarter. BC TV Friday Night Football, very pleased to bring you the Backyard Brawl. No, still keep looking around. Just amazing the crowd that's here tonight. Yeah, huge crowd. And that's Herlman around the left side, picking his way. Maybe for about four. So I want to give a shout out here to some of our viewers. It's uh, Mama and Papa Grabowski and uh, watching from Kansas City, uh, from uh, Olaf, Kansas. And uh, talk to Coach Neal before the game, uh, you know, for why missing. Believes that, you know, that's uh, representatives of number 22, Tom Grubowski's family for Wyo. So thank you for tuning in all the way from uh, Kansas City. And that is number 14 there, Jevin Tranquillo up the middle. Now, and of course, you know, Max Herlman, you know, we talk about him a lot. Tranquillo's, you know, a, a big threat there as well. And, uh, you know, both of those guys can gash you at any time for the big yards. And, of course, uh, you know, we talked about a little bit earlier with Nadrowski moving, uh, you know, of course, plays linebacker on defense, moving from guard earlier in the season to the backfield. And, he, you know, he's the pounder. So, you know, when they need a few yards like here, you expect him to get the ball. Which he did. And... Boy, yeah, it looks like he barely got it. You know, and that's the thing, you know, oh, big guy, just, a, you know, but, you know, he's an athlete. He plays linebacker on defense, does a great job there. You know, he's cranked off some runs, too, and, you know, and also has caught passes. So. Wasn't he the state javelin champion that as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and that I think that's one of the things. When you look at both of these teams, too, when we talk about some of these guys, you know, just in that backfield, you know, uh, the, the athletes that play multiple sports, it's just great. Tranquilo, and we've got a flag. Caccioni with the stop. Looks like it's coming back for a holding penalty. So that's going to march Y.O. back. You know, uh, uh, penalties, turnovers, special teams, Kerry. I mean, uh, we've talked about it at nauseam all year, but, boy, I mean, uh, you know, probably the most important aspect of these games as far as, um, you know, when they're tight like this, on turning the tide from one way or, uh, to the other team. No, you're exactly right, Bruce. And, you know, I mean, we've seen, uh, you know, some games throughout this year with a, with a lot of penalties, and, uh, you know, it, it affects you. Hurlman, and he's bottled up. BC defense standing tall on that one. You know, I think, you know, a common, common theme here with both of these defenses, too, you know, you've got multiple guys here that are uh, in on these tackles, and they're playing hard and doing a great job. And I just love the intensity. You know, at this point of the season, everybody's, you know, even when you're out there, you know, after having, you know, the game number 10 here, everybody's banged up. But everybody's going hard. The intensity of these two high school teams right here in Berks County is just amazing. Amen now. Looking to pass, he's got Hurlman in the flat, and he's down the sideline, close to a first down. Ooh, I think Caccioni saved the touchdown with that tackle. Yeah, and I don't know if that's a stat out there, but I'd love to just know how many times, like, the, the first guy trying to attempt to make a tackle and Hurl, Hurlman actually gets him down, and, you know, how many times does he make that first, second, third guy miss? But Yeah, I mean... You are exactly right. I mean, uh, one of the toughest guys to bring down we've seen all year. 
No, we've kind of followed him all the way through with the spring. We saw the liftoff between uh, Boone and, and Wyoming missing. And, uh, you know, for the skill guys, he won that whole competition. Madrowski out wide. Boy, I don't know if he got it, Kerry. He might be just short. Yeah, we'll have to see where the spot is. It seems like it's uh, right around. Uh, oh, they, they definitely put it down short. Must have went to where the knee was. Looking well, about a yard short. Yep, bringing yep. up a fourth and one here. The eyes are working a little bit better tonight. Looks like they're going for it. First big play of the game. Fourth and one near midfield. Why am missing? Going for it. Nadrowski, he's got it. First down, why am missing? I mean, with a guy like him, I, I guess I can understand why yeah. Coach Wolfram is uh, pretty confident about going for it. Yeah, I, I, I would have done it too. And again, it's easy to be the, you know, well, we're standing in bleachers, not armchair quarterback after the play. But uh, no, big time game. And when you got a guy like that, you put the ball in the hand of your playmakers. And in those short situations, you know, he's the man. So it's a huge confidence boost, too, for your, your offensive line. They love that when they can just grind and uh, first and ten. All right. And that's Hurlman kind of on the uh, end around, and he's got some room. Boy, he, <laughs> he made two guys miss on that play. Now, and, you know, getting in out there again, you know, getting uh, to the wide side, uh, again, north and south and picking up five. So second and six, according the second down, according according to our favorite illuminated down marker here. Yeah, it's the only one we've seen. It is the only one we've seen this year. So Jordan Allman, Anderson, and that's Tranquillo around the end, and he's going to be about maybe about a yard and a half short of the first down. Going to bring out about third down, and uh, you know just a few. No, it's really, you know, it's a, it's a three-head monster in the run game there for, you know, why I'm missing again, you know, Tranquilla and, of course, Horrellman, you know, can break those big ones any time, and they need, need those tough yards, Nadrowski, and, uh, you know, they, they'll just wear on you. All right, third down, about three. They give it to Hurlman. He's got the first down and a bit more. You know, we talked about, you know, Burke's Catholic and their schedule, too. I mean, and, you know, why missing certainly, I mean, that Pottsville team, you know, has had a great run this year playing the North uh, Schuylkills. You know, of course, we saw them last year up at Pottsville, too. Uh, you know, they've got guys there, you know, going playing D1 off of that team and stuff. So, you know, why missing certainly had, had some, some tough games as well. And we're rolling it down. That's going to end the first quarter with why missing driving on top, 7 to nothing over Burke's Catholic. We'll be back in just a moment. Attention parents and coaches. You had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes. Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, Create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? All right, second quarter action, backyard brawl, BCTV Friday Night Football. Thanks for joining us. That's Evan Nadrowski up the middle for Wyomissing. They're leading Burke's Catholic seven to nothing on a 60-yard touchdown run by Max Hurlman. So second and seven carry for uh, why I'm missing. They've been uh, just grinding this one out, uh, you know, with uh, uh, really that uh, two-headed monster there of Hurlman and Nadrowski. 
Got a DM from uh, Kurt House with a Here We Go Spartans. And Nadrowski powering his way up the middle to about the 30 yard line. So that's going to make it about third down and two. Of course, last night we had a game here in Berks County with uh, XR playing last night. So we, got, we are XR Tweet watching on uh, Service Electric, Channel 19. YouTube from St. Lawrence, uh, thanks for streaming. Brad and the hashtag football family and all in, so thank you. Thank you very much. That's Nadrowski. He's got the first down. Man. Oh, looks like he's short. Oh, that was, uh, wow, I thought he pounded his way through there. So it's going to leave him about fourth down and about one from the, looks like about the 28 yard line, Carrie. Yeah, about the 28. All right, fans on their feet here at Berks Catholic. Cheering for that defense. And there's the Drowski. did he get it? Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's gonna be close. Kept those feet going. And it looks it like they're there. moving the chains. Wow. And again, when you, you look at this from the, uh, the player perspective, so you got two times in this drive here, those fourth down situations. You put the ball in the Drowski's hands, let your offensive line just you know bang, and to get those uh, two first downs, that, that's a huge motivator. You know, at the same time, you know, Burks Catholic, you know, is kind of dug in here. They haven't given up any big plays on this drive. You know, they're bending. Um, you know, we'll find out what happens here the rest of this this series. All right, Almond, and that's Hurlman around the edge. Well defended by Burks Catholic. That was number 55, I believe, for uh, BC in there on the stop. Yep, uh, Randy Tobal. Double win there for Burks Catholic. Also a holding call on why missing there. So, again, great job up front. Great job getting that penetration, blowing up the run game, and uh, got holding on why missing as well. So going to be an interesting uh, decision for Coach Wolfram with the loss, whether, or excuse me, for Coach Keeley, whether, uh, yep, he declined it. I think uh, maybe the right move there, but uh, who is it for me to tell <laughs> either one of these coaches whether something's good or bad, that's for sure. But uh, going to make it second down and about 15. Regardless, nice little uh, positive shot in the arm there for that BC defense, uh, you know, getting that big tackle for loss. Second down and about 15. Alma now running around the side, gets just beyond the original line of scrimmage. So it's going to make it third down and uh, eight. Not sure that was a designed run. I think uh, nobody was open, and he just kind of tucked it and ran. No, and you know, instead of forcing it there, he had his shoulders you know, square. He was ready to throw if he would have had it. Instead of trying to force something, though, very heads-up move. And uh, again, some positive yards and making it a you know, more manageable third and eight here. 8.45 left in the second quarter. All right, Jordan Norman calling signals. He's back to pass. Throwing it out to the side, uh, incomplete. They were trying to screen out there, out to the side there to number um, 85 for why I'm missing. Uh, Aiden Mack was the intended receiver. Yeah, you know, good thought process there, kind of, you know, flown in that short side, trying to get it back, get, get a playmaker out in space. Uh, a little bit of heat lofted it a little bit high over that rush and, uh, you know, just unfortunately over his uh, receiver's head. So, well, now we got... We, Aiden Cerulli yeah. is going to try a 41-yard field goal. Yeah, and uh, definitely one of the premier kickers here in Burke. Snap Burke's down, game. boot! He's got the distance! No good, though. No good. Yeah, just a little bit wide right. Now he had the distance. Probably could have got another 10 out of that. Kick wow. It, kicking from that, you know, far hash on the right side. Thanks to Imperium Management Services, our title sponsor of BCTV Friday Night Football. Imperium Management Services. Conveniently located at 3929 Perkyoman Avenue in her Reading. Hiring for both full-time and part-time direct care professionals. 
give him a call at 877-620-8892. And here's in back to live action, McFoy, and he just got stood up. I think that was Darren Bruner again. Nope, Tranquillo. So it's going to be second down now and about seven carry. And, uh, you know, um, BC's had had that one drive where they had some um, effectiveness on the ground. But overall, this why I'm missing defense has really held them in check. And PA announcer also you know, announced number 72, Stephen Alexi there uh, being in very active up front you know, on the defensive line. McFoy. Oh, and he just slithers his way down the sideline for a first down. You know, there are so many playmakers on both sides of the ball here when you think about the McFoys and the Larkins with Brooks Catholic, you know, Tranquillo and, uh, you know, and Hurlman for YMS. And anytime those guys can get outside, there's always a potential there. You know, tackle there with uh, Nadrowski again. As I said, he's, you know, he's just not a, you know, the old, you know, 80s guard that was, you know, transformed into a, uh, a fullback in the old pro I days there. Uh, you know, he's an athlete and did a nice job there on defense making the tackle. And that's Carwell this time. Submarining his way for about uh, three yards. So going to be second down and about six. Ball's on the 44-yard line of uh, Burks Catholic. Why am missing ahead? Seven to nothing. We've got seven minutes and 20 seconds until halftime of this backyard brawl. BC TV, Friday night football. Uh, I, Carrie, just like you said, I can't believe the crowd here. I mean, the, the place is ringing with people, literally. All right, here's McFoy. And not a whole lot there. Yeah, nice job by the Y.O. defense following up. No, it's, it's just, I just love to see it. Yeah, and, of course, you know, football is so much to me. You know, you know, all the years I've played, coached, and, you know, now having the opportunity to do this. And, uh, you know, it's just to see so many folks out supporting these young men, the communities. It's just everything that's right about high school football. And I just can't say enough about it and love it. And, uh uh, again, you know, this 7-0, tight game, big implications for both of these teams. It's Section 2 title and also the playoffs. And I think Ooh. we got some movement here. We'll yeah. See if uh, they say Wyo, uh, you know, got across first or if they're going to get the uh, the false start on BC. Yeah. Interested. Uh, you know, I forgot to tell the officials that they were on television tonight. So uh, yeah. usually I like to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, I did. Uh, I tweeted out the card we got. So everybody's got all their names and we mentioned them again. You know, S Scott Widener is the referee and it's his crew. Umpire Kevin Redkay, Mike Holloway, Steve Davis, Francisco Sanchez, you know, Kirk Singleton, the field judge. And again, you know, it's. Uh, it's always easy to, uh, you know, pick on officials and stuff. But, you know, tip of the cap to these guys. Absolutely. I mean, we could not have high school sports if we didn't have the officials. And I know it's it's a challenge for a lot of athletic directors, you know, in a lot of different sports. But, uh, you know, to have people are willing to come out here to do this job that is not an easy job so these young men can play, you know, hats off to them. Half Hoffman to Caccione, not for a lot there, kind of a bubble screen there. So third down and about, uh, well, excuse me, fourth down now for Burks Catholic. And they're going to force a punting situation here. Back to kick for him again, number 85, Tyler Givens. And deep, there's that guy again, Max Herlman, for why I'm missing. Looks like they're going after the block. Givens, oh, boy, he shanked that one. Man, I don't know if it even made it to midfield. No, but it definitely made it to the cheerleaders. They scattered. <laughs> Thanks to the Children's Home of Reading for your support of BCTV Friday Night Football. Since 1884, the Children's Home of Reading has responded to the needs of children and families in crisis in Berks County and the surrounding communities. Located at 1010 Avenue, Reading, PA. Give them a call, 
8266 about services, donations, or consider fostering or adoption. The Children's Home of Reading. All right, Nadrowski, right up the gut. Whew. <laughs> Man, I wouldn't want that guy coming at me, Kerry. No, again, you know, big dude, but he's an athlete. You know, Nadrowski, of course, was playing guard earlier in the year, kind of dabbling into the backfield stuff, made the number switch over to 44, and just been playing fullback and, of course, still playing linebacker. Uh, he's a junior, you know, 6'2", 230. You know, that size and athletic, just fun to watch. And that's uh, Tranquillo there, I believe, number 14. And again, really, it's a three-head monster there in the ground game, you know, for, for a while with uh, Tranquillo and, and, and Hurlman, and then, of course, uh, you know, Nudrowski for the, uh, the yards, the tough yards. Third down, third and four, third and three. Third and three from the 38, 423 left here in the second quarter. Ama now calling signals back to throw, and he's going to take it himself for the first down and out of bounds. Good play there. Now heads up, got the first down, got a couple more, got out of bounds. Come on back and... You know, first and ten, a fresh set of downs there, Bruce. And, uh, you know, looks like uh, Y Missing's knocking on the door again. You know, I I just want to touch on what you talked about with uh, Jordan Alma just a little bit earlier, and that is, you know, really plays within himself, knows his limitations, knows where he fits, you know, into this offensive scheme, and he's just managed this team brilliantly all year. No, you know, that's, you know, the – I think the key word in there is team, you know, and of course everybody, you know, all this stuff, team, team sport, and a lot of guys, you know, say, oh yeah, team, team, team. But, you know, when you look at that crew down there, and I, I really think it's, you know, we've had the opportunity to see both of these teams. Story programs, super well coached, and they play together as a team. Thanks to our friends at Reading Alloys, they underwrite the BCTV Friday Night Football broadcast. Reading Alloys out in Robazonia. Lots of good paying jobs available out at Reading Alloys. Go to ReadingAlloys.com to see all the positions available. So seven to nothing yet, Kerry. Um, you know, been a hard fought first half with the exception of, uh, you know, that one uh, long run for the touchdown by Max Hurlman. I mean, this has just been a knockdown drag out. First and 10, ball on the 33, 409 left here in the second quarter. Wyo uh, knocking on the door. Double reverse inside, that's Hurlman. And uh, about eight yards there. Yeah, just gonna be short, ball right on this side of the uh, the R line, the down, first down marker just on the other side. Like that play, I mean, uh, you know, you have to give credit. Why I'm missing, uh, pulling out all the stops here with the play calling early on. So Alma now, that's Tranquillo, and he's got the first down, or very close. And it looks like they're gonna mark him just short. So third and less than a yard, balls on the uh, Burks Catholic 24-yard line carry. Um, Got to believe this is uh, Mr. Nadrowski. Um, I would say so. But they give it to Max Erlman right up the middle. And another touchdown for Max Erlman. 24 yards this time. And why am I missing out in front now? 13 to nothing. He kind of picked his way through the line when he got the ball and uh, broke a couple of tackles but and then ran away from the defense. Beautiful play. No, great job. And, you know, again, you know, you just think Nadrowski's going to get it. But you do things, you know, when you're play calling, you're setting up a game as you go through, setting up the next things. You know, and if that play wouldn't have worked, you got four. So if you have fourth and one, fourth and two, you know, then you can give Devin a great job, paid off, another touchdown. Cerulli, boy, he missed it, oh my. 
Aiden Cerulli misses the extra point. Yeah, not thirteen uh, to nothing. Not something you know. You know, why I was accustomed to there. You know, very much uh, veteran, very much you know, lights out. You know, in the kicking game for them. Um, you know, so that's four points that you know are missed opportunities here. You know, of course, why I was up now. You know, thirteen to zero. They did miss that extra point. They missed a field goal earlier. Um, you know, I could have them at, at seventeen to zero, but. 13 to 0 is the score here at uh, Berks Catholic High School. 256 left here in the second quarter. All right, BC now. Time to, uh, you know, pretty critical drive, Carrie. Trying to get something at least positive, to, you know, to go into halftime, and the points would be even better. Not, and, you know, again, if you're just tuning in, you know, both of these teams are undefeated in Section 2. Burke Section 2 titles on the line tonight. Both of them were ranked number one in their respective classes in District 3 in the power rankings. Burke's Catholic's number one in 4A, you know, and uh, Y Missing's number one in 3A. So uh, awful lot on the line here tonight. Um, you know, let alone a lot of these guys know each other really well, you know, played uh, coming up through together and, uh, you know, just uh, schools and communities. A little pooch kick, look out. Oh, and it's picked up by Wyatt Missing. Oh my gosh. Wow, he just like elevated that kick. And you're gonna see, he kicks it up over the first line of the of the BC players and running right down the sidelines and latching onto that and going out of bounds. Beautiful call there. Now Wyatt Missing with the ball back now. You know, this is huge on so many points now. You know, you, you got a touchdown, you got momentum, and, you know, you go and, and get the ball back on the kickoff. Uh, this, this is huge, you know, not only for the scoreboard here, but for momentum for both of these sides. Tranquillo inside handoff to Hurlman. That's that same play that they scored the touchdown on, and uh, looks like he picked up about five on that time. So that's going to make it about second and six here. Ball on the 27-yard line. Why am missing up 13 to nothing? We've got two minutes and 25 seconds until halftime. Why am missing really trying to uh, solidify this lead? Nadrowski. Nice tackle there by number nine for uh, BC. Yeah, Justin, Justin Small, Small. Nice job. Submarine them. That's what you got to do. A couple scores here uh, as we're approaching under the two-minute mark now at the in the second quarter here at Berks Catholic. Um, Governor Mifflin, 14. Conrad Weiser, 0. Fleetwood, 21. Kutztown, 0. Hamburg in the Frost Bowl. Uh, 28, Schuylkill Valley 0. Wow. Uh, that last scoring drive as well, six plays, 45 yards, took 224 off the clock and got one more score for you here. Oh, we got a flag so I can get in. Wilson 21, <laughs> McCaskey 0. Well, the Wilson score is not surprising, but Hamburg, wow. Yeah, we had Schuylkill Valley the other week, you know, their home, great facility. Those LED lights were kind of, you know, something that was neat and, uh, you know, saw them in their, their clash with Fleetwood. All right, so that backs them up. It's going to be third and ten now. Balls on the 32-yard uh, line of Burks Catholic. Why am missing? Third and Trying ten. to take advantage of this onside kick. Alma now. Back to throw and batted up in the air. Incomplete. So fourth down, minute and eight to go. That's Justin Small again. Great job there on that pass breakup. And, uh, you know, talked about when this when this series started here, you know, why missing had the momentum, you know, got the ball back on the kickoff, and, you know, what would they do with it? So, again, they've got another play left here, you know, with uh, this fourth down. But this could be huge, uh, you know, huge shoot of confidence victory for, you know, Brooks Catholic if they can uh, – shut them down here and it looks like they're going to go for the field goal. Cerulli is going to try a 49 yard field goal snap down kick. Is it enough? It's good! 
39 yards. Wow, unbelievable. Aiden Cerulli there gives Why Missing a 16 to nothing lead with a minute three to go yep. until halftime. You know, the scoreboard says the ball is on the 32, add those seven, 39, 10 for the end zone. 49 year old, 49 uh, yard field goal, good for him. And again, you know, two uncharacteristic miscues with the missed field goal, missed PAT. What a huge confidence boost to that young man to come out. Coach saying, "Okay, go out, do it." You know, and, and lighten it up for a 49 yard field goal. Well, you have to believe that. Uh, I mean, you know, Aiden Cerulli has been a, just a, a stellar performer, and uh, you know, you have to believe that as. Uh, you know, why I'm missing moves into the postseason that, uh, you know, they're going to need that man, um, you know, if they expect to go far in the postseason. Yeah, I think there's been some pretty epic kicks in the, in the past for a while in the postseason. <laughs> I think so. All right, now Cerulli, I mean, uh, boy, I'll tell you what. Um, he was the one that, uh, you know, made that great pooch kickoff and then ends up with the 49-yard field goal, so... Good effort by Cerulli on that drive. So he's ready to boot it again. And they, oh, they try that again and caught, like fair caught there. I think that was uh, Lincoln Lutz. And yeah, they finally threw a flag. Yeah. And very heads up play by Lincoln Lutz. You can fair catch that, and he did. And uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like, uh, you know, separate his head from the body hit, but, you know, just grabbing him, throwing him down, you know, that's going to draw the flag. So that's going to give Burks Catholic some very good field position with a minute remaining here in the first half. Why am missing on top, 16 to nothing, here in the backyard brawl, BCTV Friday Night Football. Thanks very much for joining us wherever you're watching throughout Burks County, Pennsylvania, the U.S., the world. I don't know if they can get us up on the uh, International Space Station, but I think just about everywhere else. So that last drive, four plays, zero yards. Took men 53 off the clock, but, yep, 49-yard uh, field goal. All right, let's see what BC can do here with a minute to go. Hoffman looking for Caccione, and it's covered. He's running for his life. Still on his feet, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's a great job by him just to get back to the line of scrimmage and not have that turn uh, ugly with a big tackle for loss. I think we've seen a uh, timeout called here. Thank you, very, oh, thank you very much for supportive concepts for Families Incorporated. One of the... One of the uh, Imperium family of companies sponsoring BCTV Friday Night Football, located at 120 Prospect Street here in Fredding. Redding. They're currently hiring for a variety of positions, full-time and part-time, with $1,000 full-time bonuses and $500 for part-time new hires. Call 888-686-7233. Supportive Concepts for Families Incorporated. Thank you for your support. All right, second and 10 now as we get back to live action. BC, ball on the Wyoming missing 44-yard line. Hoffman running. He's got, looks like that's Caccione. And uh, I don't know, has he got the first down? Looks like he does. First down, out of bounds to stop the clock. We've got 47.7 left, Kerry. Yeah, this is very, very manageable here. You know, ball's, uh, you know, 34-yard line now. you got 47 seconds left on the clock. You can certainly work the sideline. Uh, no need for panic and uh, kind of, you know, see what your pitch and catch combo with uh, Caccione can do here. And uh, yeah, it would be huge to get some points on the board here in the first half. Hoffman now. Oh, and the wild defense broke that up, and Hoffman kind of ad libs it out of bounds. I mean, <laughs> that was not the designed effect there. I think they were trying to hand it off to uh, McFoy, and the defense just broke that up. 
regardless of the uh, you know loss of two yards, not you know the end of the world here. The big thing is getting out of bounds and getting that clock to stop. So, you know, uh, second down now. You know, you still got three good downs to go here. 41 seconds on the clock. You know, again, uh, very uh, very opportune time for BC to put some points on the board. Hoffman. Oh, that was just blasted. I believe that was Darren Bruner again. Yeah. But he just got crushed there by Evan Nadrowski after he threw that pass. Yeah, no. Uh, you know, Watch Evan Nadrowski. Boom. <laughs> yeah, Drives the, him right into the turf. Bringing the heat there from his inside backer position. And, again, another, uh, you know, blocked, uh, blocked pass. So... Looks like it's third and 12 now, 36.6 left. BC trying to get some offense going here, going for Caccioni, incomplete. Just to let everybody know at halftime, we're gonna have a couple of special guests. We're gonna have John King, the sports information director of Alvernia. Coach Ralph Clark, there he is. What's up? I want to thank Alvernia for all their support. We'll start out with Jim Berkman uh, with a look at statistics, and then we'll bring in John and Coach Clark. So uh, just a jam-packed halftime, fans, so uh, stay with us. All right, Brad Hoffman. Looking down the seam. Oh, incomplete there. Just out of reach of Nolan Larkin. Just out of his reach. That's going to be a turnover on downs. And wow now. Takes over with about 25.9 seconds to go. Leading 16 to nothing over Burks Catholic. In, in really a half that they've dominated, Kerry. You know, it, it, it's, again, both these sides have been playing, you know, just really hard and, uh, you know, exception a couple big, you know, plays here or there. Uh, you know, it's been knock them down, drag them out. All right, Jordan Almond takes a knee. That's going to wind the clock here. Keep with us at halftime, friends. We're going to have Jim Berkman. Uh, spotlight on Brick Sports to talk about halftime statistics, and then we'll also have some good conversation with John King, the, the Sports Information Director of Alvernia, along with Alvernia football head coach Ralph Clark. We'll be back in a little bit. Comment and subscribe. Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. 
Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today. Welcome back to the Farino Sports Complex. Bruce Badgley, Jim Berkman, spotlight on Burke Sports. Uh, wow, what a first half, Jim. Yeah, um, the big plays. I guess that's what you what you look at. It, offensively, time of possessions even. Um, but Burke's Catholics really having trouble stopping the short running plays of Nadrowski and the long running plays of Max Herleman. I mean, it's been the story all year for why missing the speed on the outside with Max and the battering ram up the middle with Evan. Yeah, and I think a story uh, seems to be, you know, uh, with the exception of a couple of plays, uh, you know, a Wyo's defense uh, really holding that uh, running game for BC in check so far. Well, why missing's run the ball 26 times. They have 152 yards on the ground. So, I mean, they're averaging almost eight yards a run. Aided, of course, by that 60-yard touchdown run. You take that off the board, you know, and they're only averaging four yards a run. So BC's defense is doing a fairly good job. They're shutting down Tranquillo. He only has uh, 24 yards. Um, offensively, Burke's Catholic, you know, only uh, 78 yards of offense. Uh, they they got to get the running game going a little bit more. McFoy has uh, six carries, 27 yards. So they need to get him going a little bit more. Larkin had a couple of nice runs there in the first half. Passing game, it doesn't look like it's there for BC tonight. A couple of overthrown balls there right before the half. Yeah, and uh, Hoffman really hasn't had a lot of time in there. Um, Darren Bruner's been in there. I know Nadrowski buried him on a sack, or pretty close to a sack there in the half there. So, you know, what do you expect to see the second half? Same recipe. You know, why missing's just going to run the ball. If they have to pass the ball, I think they can. I, I actually think their passing game is better than BC's. Uh, Jordan Norman has done a nice job rolling out a couple times. He did almost throw an interception there. The, the defender for Burks Catholic made a nice play on it. Uh, but why am missing just going to run the ball? You know, up the middle, three, four yards at a time with Nadrowski. You know, you're taking 35, 40 seconds off the clock every time you do that. First, this was one of the fastest first halves I've ever seen. And, um, you know, it, what a beautiful night. It, let's. Let's keep playing football. But, again, it's um, the same thing. It, I don't think Coach Keeley wants to get away from his game plan. They want to run the ball, too. They just have to execute the plays a little bit better. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, how it all plays out. We've got another half to go. And then we'll have a, a game ball to present, uh, you know, a most valuable player thanks to the ball girl. We'll be back in a couple of moments. We're going to have uh, head coach Ralph Clark of Alverna University Football along with sports information director uh, John King to talk a little bit about how this all came about here with BC TV Friday Night Football. We'll be back in a moment. Back at the Farino Sports Complex, we're at halftime of the backyard brawl. Why am I missing up? 16 to nothing. I have a couple of my favorite people from Alverna University. 
<laughs> John King, Sports Information Director, and Ralph Clark, head football coach. How you doing, coach? I'm pretty good. How you doing, Bruce? Good. I, you know, I remember uh, the first time we met in the uh, Shander room just after you started. Uh, you know, it's been uh, quite a couple years here for you to get to this particular point. Um, you know, how do you think it's gone so far for you? Has it been everything that you expected it to be? Well, well I have an office now. So <laughs> let's start with that. I got an office now. But it's uh, it's everything and then some. Um, it's It's been an enjoyable ride, and it's it's been a great um, experience building it from uh, ground zero to where we are now. Um, you know, from having our first win uh, to having our first conference win, first homecoming win uh, a couple weeks ago, and, and, and seeing the progress that the kids make every week that we come out, it's, you know, it's everything that I expected it to be. Yeah, you know, for me too, uh, being, you know, along for the ride, just seeing all of the hard work that, you know, yourself, your coaching staff, that John and the athletic department have put into this project, uh, to see it all really kind of come to fruition, you know, last week with that first conference win, it had to be awful special. It definitely was, and um, it's special for, for myself and the coaching staff as coaches. Um, it's, it's special for the kids, um, cause, so they, they have a moment that they'll always remember, and they're part of history. You, we always tell them that. Everything, everything that we do is part of history. That first conference win, that first road win, that, you know, all, everything that we're going to do here is, is going to make history. And then uh, for, for, for guys like John, um, Bill Stiles, um, John McCloskey, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably even more so um, because it's something they've been working on for, for, I can say decades, plural now, I can say decades, um, and to see it to come to fruition and see your dreams um, and the sketches uh, come to real life, uh, I, I just think that it's, it's probably, I can't put it into words for them, but I know how I would feel, and um, it, it's like a dream come true. Yeah, John, I mean, uh, I, <laughs> I've seen all of those sketches, you know, over those years or whatever like that. How has it been for the athletic department? How has the football team transformed the university? Well, the transformation happens because um, the energy that surrounds football is just a little bit different, and it's something we try to capture every game day. You know, I've told people this story a bunch of times that, you know, we used to roll in on a Saturday, normal Saturday, roll in an hour and a half before games. Football Saturdays, if you're not in the building four hours before it starts, because there's, there's tents and there's tables and all those behind-the-scenes things, uh, and then there's kind of entertaining people, right? Football, the, the product on the field is entertaining. Coach Clark and his staff have put a great product out there, and those guys are fun to watch. But the energy that we can capture that surrounds the football game and we take advantage of that, that's pretty fun. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun for me, too. I mean, you know, I'm down there on the sidelines. I, I have a blast, you know, and I can feel that energy, you know, that it brings. And that homecoming crowd last week, I mean, it was huge. It was fantastic. Um, you know, it has to be, uh, you know, very uh, satisfying, you know, for the university there. But, you know, talking a little bit about, you know, why we're here, um, it's really a lot to do with this man here, John King. Um, I still remember, you know, another one of those meetings a couple years ago. We just sat in and brainstormed, and, uh, you know, where you said, hey, look, we're, we're not using our equipment on a Friday night. Uh, it makes sense to, uh, to really help out the community, help out the football fans in Berks County. And uh, so you allow us to, you know, utilize your equipment, students, yep. to put on this broadcast. You know, how has that, you know, uh, uh, worked behind the scenes there at Alvernia? Well, so I'm a, a ton of different directions to go here on this question. Uh, you got one of my guys down there who's a freshman on the sideline doing camera tonight, and he is loving that experience. And the more we can get students in who, you know, maybe they're a little creative or maybe they love football or maybe they've just always been a part of a sideline and they want to do that at a, in a high school environment like this, we provide that through you. I mean, let's not... Let's not pretend that we did all this heavy lifting. I mean, you've been, uh, you know, a champion of what we've got going to get this product out onto the air. And BCTV has been right there. And we sit down, and that gives an opportunity to talk to the Reading Royals about getting interns and video people over there. There are endless opportunities. Uh, and, you know, you talk about meetings, right? The first time we meet is probably on social media because you're at a basketball game tweeting video of probably Lonnie Walker. And, and I say, what's this guy doing, man? And, and we can take advantage of that. We can kind of harness that opportunity. And so to work together with you to, to be here doing this is pretty cool. It's a lot of fun, uh, you know, as well. Look, 
Um, the reason we're on BCTV is because, you know, look, we're, we're not professionals, okay? I, I don't do this for a living. Um, you know, we, we're using, utilizing students. You know, I think collectively Alvernia has, has put together a project where we're just trying to, uh, you know, get the fans of Berks County, you know, engaged with their teams. And, uh, you know, it's been, I think, uh, you know, a really great experience for me. I know for the students it's been great, not only for football, We've done basketball. We've done all-star games. And, uh, you know, it's got to be good for you, too, Coach. I mean, you know, seeing Alvernia, you know, out there at all these football games, not only here, but, you know, uh, you know, we did the uh, Tri-County All-Star game where we've, you know, hook up every year. Seems like, I mean, do you see some value in that, you know, and how Alvernia is being portrayed to all the student athletes out there then? Well, I think it's more than just the student athletes. I think that it's just an extension of who, who we are as a university, um, reaching back into the community, making sure that um, we are a part of the community and we're active. And so, I mean, just like you say, you, you, you have our students out here working. They're getting experience. Um, you're getting experience or what have you. Um, it's an extension of who we are um, as a Franciscan university, being a part of the community, um, whether it's athletics or in the local uh, elementary schools, junior high schools, high schools, or what have you, just being a part of the community, making sure that we're giving back uh, as much as we're receiving. So I, I look at it that way more so than I look at just the athletic aspect. So And, yes, you are a mainstay everywhere that I, everywhere I go. You are a mainstay. You're, I, can't, I can't leave that out. can't leave that out. Well, listen, thank you very much. Really appreciate both of you gentlemen stopping by. I know that we couldn't do BCTV Friday Night Football without really either one of you guys. So uh, hopefully we'll continue on. You know, next year we're going to be doing basketball this year. And, uh, you know, we'll see where it takes us. I mean, uh, you know, sky's the limit. It seems like every time I walk into John's office, it's, uh, you know, a half hour of brainstorming on how we can make things better. So, well, listen, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, we'll uh, go back to some commercials, and then we'll be back for the second half. Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today.
world can see you in it. Okay. We are back. Sorry about that, gang. Slight little error, but we are back. 10.45 to go here in the third quarter now. Burke's Catholic and why am missing the backyard brawl. Holding our breath there for a few minutes. Well, we lost our connectivity, but 16 to nothing. Why am missing in front. See what the second half has in store for us here, Bruce. 10-19 left in the third quarter. Again, this game uh, very much in reach for Burks Catholic. Why missing the punt? So good defensive stand there by BC to start the half. And so BC will start on offense there. That was Christian Caccioni with the fair catch right there at the 20 yard line. So uh, uh, thanks for hanging with us there fans. We really appreciate it. It's BC TV Friday Night Football back on the air, let's hope. Some uh, <laughs> quick updates on halftime scores here. Bruce just come in from, uh, of course, Jim Berkman, Spotlight on Burke Sports. Does our stats for us, provided these. Hamburg 28, Schuylkill Valley 0. Fleetwood 41, Kutztown 0. Governor Mifflin out over Conrad Weiser 21-7. Hershey 21, Twin Valley 7. Wilson 35. Wilson 35, McCaskey 6, and Redding 8, Muhlenberg 0. Halftime scores. Nice run by Nolan Larkin there on first down for BC. One of their better offensive uh, plays of the night. So BC in business here. Their first possession of the second half. They're down 16 to nothing to why missing. Yeah, if you're just joining us, you know, Burks Catholic, you know, had the opportunity at the end of the the first half uh, to, to possibly get some points on board. Didn't make that happen. Big series here if they could get some some get some yards, you know, and uh, kind of put a drive together and possibly get back on the, back on the, the board here. And, uh, you know, just uh, plenty of time left here in the second half, but, uh, you know, need to kind of get, uh, get some momentum going. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, key drive, to really get some confidence back in this game. That is for sure. All right, so second down and about six. And here's McFoy, and he's got some room. I don't know if he had enough for the first down, though. So third and one carry. Ball's on the 46-yard line or excuse me, 41 yard line of BC, their first drive of the second half. See what they do here, balls on the right hash, wide side, still left. See uh, Lutz up top. That's Carwell, and I think he's got the first down. I'll tell you why, it looked like that wide missing uh, defense. Uh, you know, again, a lot of penetration in the first half that they had him stacked up. Uh, second effort there, and uh, they're giving it to him. It's going to move the chains. It's going to be a first down for Burks Catholic, and this may be their opportunity to start to put a drive together and get some points on the board. All right, first and 10 now. And Nolan Larkin just got hammered there by... Jevin Tranquillo, wow. You know, some names that we kind of been talking about uh, all season. And uh, again, you know, kind of, you know, going back to that first game of the year when Burks Catholic was playing Exeter, was, you know, shutting down, shutting down. And then at the end of the game, we saw, you know, their two playmakers, Larkin and McFoy, break off two long touchdown runs that were the difference in that game. So uh, big play capability is always there for Burks Catholic. Second down, 17 to go. 7.48 left here in the third quarter. So here's Hoffman. He's back to throw, and he just hasn't had any time all night. Jevin Tranquillo there, right on top of him. So that's going to make it third down and a whole lot there, Kerry. Yeah, and you know, you know, 
that said, you know, Tranquilo here, you know, a, you know, playmaker on offense, also coming up, making some big plays here on defense. Um, yeah, it's bringing up a third and 24. Okay. Well, I, I don't know if you have a lot in the playbook for third and 24, but let's see what BC comes up with. All right, Hoffman now. Back to pass. And, oh, my. Yeah, not Incomplete. Uh, the one I'm missing player was actually looking at, at Christian Caccione. He wasn't looking at the ball. He could have easily intercepted it if he'd just been looking the right direction. Yeah, McFoy was out here as well. We'll, uh, you know, huddle up with the coaches over there on the sideline there trying to uh, – Kind of see where that went, uh, went, went awry. But uh, regardless, it was a, an opportunity there to put some drives together and uh, kind of get down the field. Now it's fourth and forever, and uh, BC's forced to punt. Hurlman back deep. Good boot. Hurlman on the 40 yard line and just runs it out for about a six yard return. You know, and, you know, again, over the course of the season, we've seen Hurlman is dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Really, that Burke's uh, Catholic punt team has done a, a pretty nice job of not letting him get, uh, you know, break off any big returns so far tonight. Okay. Why am I missing now? Ready to take control again? Leading 16 to nothing. 644 here remaining in quarter number three of the backyard brawl. Thanks for joining us, BCTV yeah. Friday Night Football. Um, great halftime there, Bruce. You're actually uh, getting some, some DMs coming in about that. Kurt Althaus saying, nice to see uh, Coach Clark. Let's go, Wolves. And a little shout-out to Alvernia with your guest from halftime. Yeah, I tell you what. Um, I've had, I've had, I've been very fortunate, uh, you know, meeting Coach Clark very early on in the process here and, you know, watching the metamorphosis of that football program, you know, up close, uh, just been uh, terrific. And uh, I can't say enough for, uh, you know, the support of Alverni and John King for BCTV. And, you know, even last year when we first started this project, you know, just online. I mean, uh, just tremendous, tremendous uh, support. Second down, ball on the right hash. All right, um, and that's Nadrowski. He gets a couple. He is going to be short of the first down. Yeah, look, looking probably about a uh, third and uh, four maybe here coming up. Yeah, third and three, third and four. Again, not panic time here, but if you're Burks Catholic, you know, having a stop and getting your defense off the field, getting your offense another opportunity would, would be huge here. Absolutely. All right, Almond. And that's Tranquillo for the first down. Nice play there. So they're moving the chains again, Kerry. You know, the interesting thing talking with Jim Berkman there at halftime, spotlight on Burke Sports, was that the time of possession was relatively equal for both teams. Yeah, and again, that kind of speaks to, you know, it's been a hard-fought battle, you know, just uh, kind of like, you know, it, it's been a war out there. And, you know, both teams have been going hard, you know, with the exception of, uh, you know, big play here or there. Uh, it's been relatively equal. Tranquillo. Tranquillo. Again. So, again, you know, why missing their run attack? Really a three-head monster there, you know, both with Hurlman and Tranquillo, who's gotten the call here. You know, this series, they can both gash in. And, you know, of course, then the Drowski again, the tough yards. Brings up a second down, second and 10. You know, we're... Uh, second down. Four. Under halfway to go here in the third quarter. Now at 449. Burke's Catholic faithful uh, trying to cheer on their defense here. And, and he's corralled. Still doesn't want to go down. <laughs> Tell you what, look at that guy. <laughs> He's you know, fired up. But on the flip side of it, too, even though they've kind of been on the field a lot, you know, and, and the, the Burks Catholic defense, they're still gang tackling. You know, it's, it's not a thing of like, okay, somebody's got them. You know, they're That's still swarming to the ball. And we've kind of seen that by both sides here so far tonight. That's the one want. Third and one, 413 left here in the third quarter. 
Huge third down here for both teams. Nadrowski. That's one. That's one. Yeah, and they're going to give him the the first down here. So, got a first and ten ball on the uh, about twenty-eight. Why missing going in here? Three fifty left in the uh, third quarter. Again, with both of these teams, you know, keeping the ball on the ground. Uh, you know, the, the clock's really kind of keeps moving. Almond, that's Tranquillo, who has really uh, emerged here in the second half as the workhorse. Yeah, he's came up uh, big for, for a while on defense, and uh, he's really getting his number called a lot here on this drive. So second down and about five, Wyo driving again. There's 3.20 left here in the third quarter. 16 to nothing, the Spartans on top of Burks Catholic. And it looks like we had a little movement. I think the Nadrowski may have uh, jumped there a little bit. Yeah, Burks Catholic definitely pointing over to the wire side of the field. But, you know, coming into tonight, you know, when you look at this, you know, the, the averages for these two guys, Herlman was a, you know, rushing was a 10.8 yards uh, per carry uh, average, you know, and Tranquilla not far behind with 9.5. So, uh, again, you know, both big, uh, big play capability guys there. All right, don't forget, fans, at the end of the game, we'll have the Ball Girl custom game ball presentation of the game most valuable player. We'll do that on the field following the game. And Hurlman just got hurled backwards on that one. Yeah, so again, you know, they talked about here that Burke's Catholic defense is swarming. You're getting three, four hats on Hurlman each time here. You know, they're, they're bending. Uh, you know, we'll find out here if they're going to break or, uh, you know, they're going to hold. It would be huge to come up with a defensive stop here. So third down and about nine for Burke's Catholic. Said it's time for the, uh, you know, here it's time for the uh, YOO line to get a little gritty too and get after these uh, defenders of Burks Catholic. And uh, we've got a whistle. Yeah, a lot of movement going on there. I don't think everybody got set. So third and 14 now after the five yard mark off. Why I'm missing. Out in front, 16 to nothing. We've got the two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Jordan Allman now calling signals. And another flag. Yeah, Tranquil is going to go in motion. He didn't even get to go before uh, we, you know, saw the flags coming in. The BC defense pointing over to the the Wyo side. Those so, things kind of coming in bunches here. Not, uh, you know, not something we usually see out of a uh, Wyo missing team. Absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I mean, I've said on a number of occasions, I thought Wyo was the most fundamentally sound football team I'd seen all year. So there's Hurlman around the end, and another flag comes flying in. And Hurlman still doesn't want to go down. Tough kid. We've got another flag, and I think we've got a player down on the field. Holding on wild, geez. Going to be interesting to see. Uh, I got to believe Coach Keeley's going to take it, but you never know. I mean, that's going to bring up a fourth down if he declines the penalty. But it looks like they're moving him back. Looks like we have a cramp here on the Burke's uh, Catholic player. Yeah, no, just uh, the, this whole uh, this whole series right here has been a little bit disjointed for uh, why I'm missing. And you know, if you're on the Burks Catholic side of the field, you know, you got to look at this as an opportunity to, you know, make a stop. You know, 
uh, and you know, kind of keep uh, the score where it is, and uh, you know, kind of uh, you know, get something going on offense. And again, you know, <laughs> you know, going back to what we've seen, you know, the capability that uh, you know Burke's Catholic has with playmakers, they are far from being out of this game. Well, they're going to be all the way back to midfield. They've got to get to the 19-yard line for a first down. So I'm guessing that's 31 yards. Uh, yeah, friends with the scoreboard have a third and 32. So. Okay. All right. Close enough. I was within a yard. Alma now under center. And that's Nadrowski. And he's <laughs> rumbling up the gut. Up to the 40-yard line. Uh, that's going to be fourth down and 20. And that will bring in the punting unit for YMSA. Aiden Cirilli. Yeah, we saw you know him uh, you know punching a huge you know field goal in the first half, you know from 49 yards. Uh, you know it's a little bit out of range now. Yeah, that would have been quite a boot. So we're under a minute here in the third quarter. Why I'm missing now, ready to punt, Aiden Cirilli. Opportunity for both teams and here. And he gets it off. Fair Catchy catch. only the fair catch there at about the 14-yard line. No, nice job, nice high punt, you know, and, and kind of, you know, was able to pin him down there. Good job by, uh, you know, Burks Catholic and the fair catch, securing the ball. Again, your offense out on the field. Thanks to Alvernia University, uh, the Golden Wolves, um, without their support, we would not have BCTV Friday Night Football fans. Thank you very much. We talked to John King, coach, uh, football coach, head coach Ralph Clark at halftime. Thank you, Alvernia University. All right, we're back to live action. 37.3 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Hoffman on first down, back to pass, incomplete. Yeah, looking to hit uh, McFoy there again. You know, that's one of the things you can get the ball in his hands in space. Uh, you always have an opportunity, just a little bit out of reach. Looked to be pretty well covered there, Kerry. So that's going to make it second and 10 now from the 14-yard line. 33 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Thanks for joining us here on BCTV Friday Night Football. Again, when you look at the score, 16 uh, mix, missed extra point for why missing in the first half, also a missed field goal. McFoy now around the edge. He's got the first down, I believe. It is a first down. So. 27.7 seconds left in the third. Now why am missing trying to put together a drive to get back in this ball game, Kerry. You know, and haven't we seen this uh, you know, movie before? You know, again, uh, I, you know, Burks Catholic certainly not out of this. Ball on the right hash now, wide side to the left. See if they try to get uh, you know, McFoy or Larkin around left end and uh, try and pick up some more yards. All right, Brad Hoffman now calling signals under center. That's McFoy, and he <laughs> just got met. Yeah, run. Nadrowski just blasted him in the hole. Yeah, run into the short side here, kind of, you know, turned it up a right around tackle, and yeah, Nadrowski is just uh, a downhill player. Uh, again, an athlete, he can go lateral, he can go, you know, left to right too, but it, yeah, that's, uh, you know, his run fit there and filling the hole, yeah, it's pretty nasty. Well, that's going to do it for the third quarter. Why am missing ahead 16 to nothing over Burks Catholic. We'll be right back. Well, I thought we would be right back, but I guess we're going to stay here with live action. All right. <laughs> Starting the fourth quarter, carry 16 to nothing. Why am I missing in front of Burke's Catholic? Um, you know, we talked about this being a knockdown drag out. Boy, that third quarter was sure a knockdown drag out. That is for sure. Uh, both teams really haven't... Uh, you know, uh, opportunities, but the, those defenses 
uh, just kind of held their own. It was kind of bend but don't break in the third quarter. So here's BC coming back out, needing something to get back in this ball game, starting the fourth quarter. A big night for uh, Berks uh, County football here. Berks Section 2 title on the line, playoff implications as well. Nice got to say hi to some folks here, you know, at halftime and uh, the McCuskers and, of course, you know, Gavin, their son's a quarterback at Exeter. You know, broke some records last night in their game against Boone. And a nice pitch out there to Larkin, but he went nowhere. Jevin Tranquillo. Nice tackle there immediately as the catch was made. So third down now a nine, Kerry. And again, we talked about this, you know, obviously, you know, the Burks Section 2 titles on the line, playoff implications, but, you know, just like that with the McCusker stopping by, it's, it's just, you know, the folks that are involved with Burks County football, it's, it's really, a, it's bigger than just schools and communities. A lot of these guys, when you see them, they're, you know, really encouraging each other. Double reverse there to McFoy went nowhere. So a punting situation for Burks Catholic starting quarter number four in the backyard brawl, BC TV Friday Night Football. Yeah, and I, one of the other points I know we talked about in the pregame too, but with section realignment for the foreseeable future, this could be the last back, backyard brawl that we may see for a while. Yeah, it sure looks like that, Kerry, unfortunately. So Max Herman receives the punt. He breaks a tackle, cutting back. Looks like he made it into Burke's Catholic territory. So why am missing with some good field position to start here the fourth quarter. Looks and like we may boy, have we got two players down. Yeah. Burke's Catholic and a wide missing, but you no, know, kind of just going back and looking at you know where we've come from the summer to you know uh, having the opportunity to do the preview shows in studio at uh, you know BC TV preview in section one, preview in section two. Um, I think you know looking back, uh, you know, and I think you were really the one, Bruce, that had a lot of the the insights of you know where Fleetwood was going to you know kind of start to rise up. But I think we expected this that. Burks Catholic and Y Missing would be the two two programs, you know, sitting here at the end of the season, you know, battling it out for this title. And uh, I think one of the other things, you know, that you know you kind of brought the light too is, you know, with District Three, you know, and the uh, doing away with the neutral sites and really now, you know, having that number one seat is so huge. Uh, you know, if you can win out, you can be hosting that district title, you know, championship game. Uh, on your home turf in your home stadium now. You know, and I think that that was the biggest uh, item related to this game. Now, I, I felt that if Wyo lost, they still, I think, had enough margin where they would still host a home playoff game. But BC, if they lost, it would be very difficult. Uh, in fact, they might not even get a first round bye because the amount of a penalty that they would get because they're losing to a team, a classification below them. I mean, uh, that could be that could be tough for them uh, going into the postseason. But you know, hey, look, you got to get to the postseason, which both of these teams will, and you just take it how it falls. Well, you know, and I think when we did our preview shows, we looked at that. You know, teams that were just trying to get their feet underneath them, teams that were looking to take the next step, and then teams like the two teams we have tonight, where you know, when you've got you know a school, community, programs, coaching staffs that are you know very established. The expectation is for these two teams to be in the playoffs each year. Nadrowski just won't go down. Out to about the, or down to about the 44-yard line of Burks Catholic. Again, yeah, it, you know, it's 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 just been, you know, the, the season in retrospect. It, it, it's really hard for me, you know, this is our last quarter of BC TV Friday Night Football, and it just feels like we just got started. No, it really does. And, you know, again, we've had a Berks County team in all the games, but 
looks like we have officials stopping play here. You know, being able to, to get down to Lancaster County and, you know, we had, you know, Governor Mifflin down at Cocalico and, uh, you know, again, you know, kind of got to talk to you a little bit about the uh, – the opera fudge uh, here in uh, in Dutch country, and uh, you know that had a great uh, opera fudge down at uh, Cocalico. Thanks to Imperium Management Services, our title sponsor of BCTV Friday Night Football. Can't thank Imperium enough for their support of BCTV Friday Night Football. Um, Carrie, I know that you've got an affinity for uh, I I Imperium there, but Boy, they've just been such a tremendous supporter of ours. No, absolutely. To have a title sponsor to help, uh, you know, give us the opportunity to bring these games to the fans, you know, of Berks County football, high school football, and to be able, you know, for folks from, you know, Kansas City down to Stone Harbor and everywhere in between to be able to watch these games, you know, has been, been great. Nadrowski still on his feet. <laughs> Yeah, again, that's, you know, talking a little bit about the athleticism there, too. You know, uh, trying to get north and south, got hit, bounce, 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 got out to the sidelines and got those positive yards, you know, going up, going up field. But, no, just getting down into Lancaster County. And, again, you know, uh, Eric uh, Riss Miller, always a gracious host up at Pottsville, having the opportunity to go up and uh, catch, you know, the, the why missing early in the season up there and that thrilling double overtime game up at Pottsville. That was a lot of fun, too. Jevin Tranquillo, first down. Why am I missing? Yeah, I think it's a, a huge shout-out to the, the gracious hosts that we've had. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, all over the board as far as, you know, trying to get in with different schools and, and do these games. So, you know, we've had a lot of really gracious hosts throughout. And, uh well, you know, Nothing more gracious than uh, Bill Hess here at Burke's Catholic. I mean, this is our second home. Um, you know, hats off to, to, to Bill Hess, who, uh, you know, signed up five, to sure. let us broadcast these games very early on. And, uh, you know, I, I can't thank, you know, Mr. Hess and, and the people here at Burke's Catholic for all of the hospitality that we've had, not only this year, but since we started this project, uh, you know, last year. No, it's been, uh, you know, great. You know, here we've got to see some teams come in, you know, from out of the area and out of the state. You know, we had McDonough here last year. Of course, we had, you know, Central Dolphin here last year. This year we got to see Malvern Prep come up and play here too. So we get to see some teams from outside the area when they come to visit Berks County. Evan Nadrowski bulldozing forward. Yeah, so the last series was kind of the Tranquilo show. And here, uh, you know, of course, Evan Nadrowski is getting the call a lot. You know, as, as, you know, keeping the ball on the ground, time's, you know, ticking away here. 8.33 left in the uh, the fourth quarter. Again, for all of our other sponsors that have been so great, you know, or, you know, Burke's uh, BCTV, you know, uh, Friday Night Football shirts that we wear every week. Thanks to Ampro for providing those. Absolutely. Ampro, Redding Alloys, our underwriter of the BCTV broadcasts. Um, you know, P.J. Willihans, um, you know, we can't do this without their support. Uh, and, you know, fans, all I can say is that these organizations support high school football. Fans support these organizations that allow us to bring these games into your home, and, you know, everywhere. And like I said, Redding Alloys, um, you know, the uh, underwriter of these BCTV broadcasts. Uh, they've been fantastic from the get-go here, and uh, we really appreciate their support. First and 10, eight minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Why am I missing driving? And on a first and 10, looks like that was... You know, and uh, everywhere we go, we've got our banner, and you know, it serves as a backdrop for a lot of our interviews that we do, thanks to uh, Blue Dog Printing for providing our banner. It has our title sponsors on with uh, Imperium and also Alvernia and you know, Ampro as well, you know, outfitting us this year. And a you know, huge shout-out to Blue Dog, Blue Dog Printing for our banner. 
Well, a huge shout out to our families as well. I mean, uh, you know, we need the support of our families to do these broadcasts, just like, you know, the players need support from their own families to go out and play. I mean, uh, you know, Friday nights we're away, and, um, you know, there's other times, uh, you know, that it, that it takes away from, from family time. And so a shout out to, you know, our families. <laughs> uh, it's... It's really a you know a labor of love for everybody here between our sponsors, between you know everybody here who works on the broadcast, and that's Max Hurlman in for the touchdown, 23 yards, cramping up as he does it. That's going to make it 22 to nothing in favor. Of why missing. 6.47 to go. <laughs> Cramping up as he crossed the goal line. Yeah, he's starting to see some uh, some of the fans, you know, start to file out now, you know, with uh, why missing going up here, you know, with three scores. Boy, how does it, uh, imagine that why I'm missing sideline right now feeling awfully good. Up 23 to nothing over Burks Catholic with 6.47 remaining carry. So kind of, uh, you know, Burks Catholic certainly has their backs up against the wall now. Uh, need to come out and, uh, you know, make some stuff happen. And again, you know, they, uh, you know, like to run as well. You know, neither of these teams, you know, I, I, you know, Going out, let them here saying, you know, really want to rely on the pass. You know, uh, they may be in the situation now they're going to have to put the ball in the air a little bit. Again, you know, we, we saw it back week one, you know, the, the two big runs, one by Lark and one by McFoy. So they have the big play capability on the ground, but, uh, you know, they just don't have the time left to be able to, uh, you know, pound and ground and uh, hope to, to break something big, you know, to, to make up, you know, all those scores. I mean, really, it's, you know, you're talking about, you know, three touchdowns here and uh, two-point conversions. You know, if, uh, you know, why a score would stay the same, you're talking about three touchdowns, three two-point conversions to get you to 24. It's a, it's a tall order uh, for Burks Catholic at this point in the fourth quarter. Well, one that a good return uh, could, uh, it, you know, could really help right now. Uh, which, quite honestly, uh, you know, why I'm missing in this uh, pooch kicking by Aiden uh, Cirilli has uh, just kept BC on their heels on the kickoff all night. Well, it's, you know, a little chip shot kick, and that's picked up. I'm not entirely sure who that was. It finally goes down. I think that was Caccioni, wasn't it? No. Yeah, but when you look at the, how the wide missing defense has been playing all night, you know, having given up a score, you know, you're still looking at, you know, having to go 55-plus yards here for Burks Catholic versus kicking deep and putting it in the hands of, uh, you know, Abdul McFoy. You know, uh, it's worked out well for, for wide missing tonight with the kicking game. Uh, absolutely, especially when they re recovered that one. Uh, now, it didn't lead to any points, I don't believe. Uh, uh, but, I, no, I take that back. After that was recovered, that's what uh, the same possession that Cirilli hit the 49-yard field goal. So, Yeah, and so when you, know, you look at that, though, too, it's, it's just a thing. You just score, you do that, you know, and kind of just keep the momentum going. All right. Brad Hoffman now running. And complete the Caccioni, but there is a flag. There is a flag. <laughs> Just uh, incredible <laughs> to see how we make this broadcast work sometimes. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Felt something at my feet. I see an ice cube. Uh, I don't think we're at, well, where we're at season-wise, a hail or a sleet storm. But I think I really talk about that, too. It seemed like, you know, last year it was like uh, – just about every week was it going to be a monsoon or not a monsoon, and we've just had great weather all the way through this season. So we far. we certainly have. We went through an entire season uh, without any rain or having to deal with the rain. And there's another flag. 
Hoffman running for his life. And uh, flag again. Wow, getting a little uh, getting a little rough out there right now. No, well, you know, you go back to, you know, of course we weren't on BC TV yet, just streaming last year in our first game that we did here. Um, that was the first time they were playing a game on the new surface last year, you know, by AstroTurf. And, you know, it was kind of very rainy all, all day long, but by the time, you know, game time, the rain had stopped. But, you know, this playing surface now in its second year, just, uh, you know, great, great field. You know, we were out on it again before the game, and it's just a, a great field to play on. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Farino Sports Complex here, really our home away from home. Uh, we've done more games here than we have any other field. And uh, just, you know, the hospitality that we get, just fantastic. And uh, we really appreciate, you know, all that, that uh, Brooks Catholic has done, like I said, to uh, accommodate us. You know, we block out a whole bunch of seats and, you know, no, and especially it's tough tonight when you had such a big crowd, still a lot of people here. Yeah, when you look so. around the, the outside the fence that's outside the track, it's still a, a lot of standing room only. And, uh, you know, a few folks have filed out, but there's still a lot of people here. So BC now, it's first down and a whole lot here. So McFoy and that Y.O. defense just stretching it out, not giving an inch. Looks like at uh, somebody down there for a while yeah, on the sidelines. Yeah, it's Tranquillo, and again, uh, you know, of course, at this point we hope nothing serious with anybody, probably just another cramp. So tending to... Uh, why missing player on the sidelines there, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Hate to see that. And he's up. It was Jevin Tranquillo, and he is running off on his own power. That's always good to see. He's had a fine game. No, he has. Again, you know, Tranquillo, Drowski, and of course, Hurlman. And, you know, Hurlman scored, you know, last again. And that was uh, um you know, a nine-play, 51-yard drive that took 348 off the clock, you know, bringing us to where we're at now with 555 left here in the fourth. On the night, Y missing had 47 rushes and 249 yards of rushing. Um, you know, Hurlman's had 14 of those for 130, uh, 34 yards, you know, and three touchdowns. Yeah, and, you know, based on their performance here tonight, obviously they're going to be a force to be reckoned with uh, in District 3 play um, going into the postseason. Um, and, uh, you know, they kind of proved, uh, you know, how tough they are by meeting all comers this year and, uh, you know, playing North Schuylkill, who's, uh, you know, a top-ranked. Oh, and there's a fumble picked up by McFoy. Uh, you know, uh, where, which who they handled at home. I mean, they jumped out quickly on them and, uh, you know, really had control of North Schuylkill for, for most of that game. I mean, beat a, beat a very tough Pottsville team. So why am I missing? Uh, definitely going to be a team to be reckoned with uh, in District 3 and, and I think uh, in the in the PIAA tournament as well. No, definitely. When you talk about those two teams, too, you know, Pottsville's had a great season this year. North Schuylkill, we saw all them, you know, last year, too. Just a, that's a great program. They got a lot of guys that are going to go play on, a, you know, the next level, including, you know, D1 guys, guy going to Penn State. I mean, so it, it's, you know, that, that's a tough team. Very, very tough team. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how Burke's Catholic fares now in, uh, you know, the 4A tournament, which, um, you know, Daryl and I have talked about on our first set of down show really all year long, how wide open it was. And, you know, teams like Burke's Catholic and Bishop McDevitt, who have really ruled 4A for, in you know, in recent memory, um, you know, there's a lot of other teams in 4A that are, you know, coming to the top. And uh, it's going to be quite wide open 
in the 4A bracket. No, it really is. 429 left here in the fourth quarter. 23 points on the board for why I'm missing. Um, Burks Catholic has not yet scored tonight. Let's see what they can do here. 429, like you said, Kerry. Um, you know, <laughs> they really have not had anything productive in the second half at all. You know, but for both of these teams, too, you know, again, you know, it's, you know, you win, you know, it's a Section 2 title, helps with, you know, where you're going to be at in the playoffs. But, you know, for a lot of these guys, you know, and seniors, when you look at the, the whole piece, and there's Max in again and just, you know, getting more yards, uh, you know, for, for some guys out there, you know, across Pennsylvania, you know, this is going to be, for those seniors, this is going to be the last high school game they're going to play realistically for a lot of guys it's going to be the last football game they're ever going to play you know so for both of these teams you know a lot of you know very very you know athletic great young men that are seniors you know they're going to go on to play another week but you know that's not the case for everybody across the state you know some seniors are playing their final game they'll ever play tonight absolutely i mean uh you know it it's the best of times and the worst of times. Here's Evan Nadrowski there. You know, the best of times in that these teams that uh, have performed well kind of move on. The worst of times is just what you talked about, that, you know, high school careers come to an end. And um, for the vast majority of these kids, uh, they won't put pads on, you know, ever again. And uh, so, it, you know, it becomes a bit... Uh, uh, you know, melancholy and, and having to, you know, call these games. But, you know, uh, it, it is what it is. I mean, that's the game that we all sign up for and play. And that's the reason why we love it. No, and it's just, uh, again, you know, so grateful for the opportunity we've had to bring you these uh, Berks County teams and all these great high school games, you know, this season. And, of course, you know, you know what football has meant to my life, you know, playing 14 years, you know, coaching high school, college, you know, pro indoor and you know then with uh, you, you know this starts my 30 <laughs> hours straight of football every weekend doing these broadcasts of course my wife kelly is the cheerleading coach at westchester university so it's you know catching the PSAC every day on saturday and my son brett plays for the uh, southern cali uh, juco champs out there ventura it's his games uh, six o'clock cali time so nine o'clock here watching those live streams uh every saturday night so it's it's about 30 hours of football straight for me, you know, when we uh, start our broadcast and uh, nothing I'd rather do, uh, you know, every Friday and Saturday in the fall. But, you know, just uh, be around, you know, the game that was so great, you know, and, and you know, so good to me and uh, just continues on to be a huge part of our lives. Yeah, this has just been an enormous honor for me this year to have the opportunity to, to uh, you know, be a part of this team. And it is a team. Uh, that brings these games to all these fans. And uh, so I'm going to meander my way down to the sidelines there, Mr. Carey. If uh, Mr. Berkman, I think, will be uh, joining you uh, momentarily to do the presentation. Yeah, no, and you know, Jim Berkman's been our stats guy, spotlight on Burke Sports, uh, done a great job all year. You know, and Alvernia with, you know, production part and camera crew lewis uh you know he is our producer he's clutch you know scott smith has done some producing for us and is on main camera tonight you know you guys make it all easy for me i just gotta throw on the headset and you know talk about the game i love and uh um you know it's just been a, a great run this year 136 left here in the fourth quarter while with the ball You know, again, kind of, you know, testament here to Burke's Catholic, the program, you know, the, you know, the defense still playing hard, you know, Nolan Larkin there, but, you know, it, it's, you know, three, four hats on uh, the tackle, you know, each time, both these sides still playing hard. Uh, and again, for a lot of these guys, they played together coming up, you know, with uh, youth programs, you know, friends, you know, play multiple other sports together. And, uh, you know, it is a huge rivalry, but, you know, again, it's just been so cool to see what you know these these guys around Berks County when somebody has a big game you know the 
you know, the, the likes and the, the replies on Twitter to, you know, their friends from around Berks County. Just a lot of class young men. I'm the quarterback there, keeping the ball, taking it down. Stop short of the goal line. Under a minute left to play here. Clock's running, 37. First and goal situation, and uh, I'm missing just letting uh, time run here on the clock. They will have to run another play. The, uh, the field clock is uh, 14, and the uh, scoreboard clock's at 19. It looks like the last play of the game, and uh, Wyomissi not going to pour any more on. Victory formation, take the knee, and uh, seeing the celebration now, you've got your 2019 Burks Section 2 Championship decided here tonight. Both of these teams coming into the game undefeated in section play. Uh, of course, you know, both of them coming in as uh, number one ranked in their, uh, you know, 3A and 4A and in, in District 3 for the power rankings heading into the playoffs. So again, Both teams going through the line here for the handshakes. Uh, my broadcast partner, Bruce, uh, down on the field as we do each week. Uh, you know, can't thank the ball girl enough, uh, you know, for, you know, providing us with game balls to give to the player of the game each week. And, uh, you know, this one a little special. I even had the backyard brawl uh, on the ball. And if you're on Twitter and follow us, we put that out during the week. Bruce is going to present the uh, player of the game ball to our uh, our winner of the game ball here in a few minutes. Again, uh, final score here tonight, Burke Section County 2 uh, championship on the line. And, uh, you know, why missing coming away with the 23-0 uh, to 0 victory over to Burke's County Saints. And uh, Jim Berkman's making his way down here. He's going to be able to kind of recap a little bit for us with some of the stats. Okay, from the uh, top row up here of the bleachers on the home side at Burke's Catholic, uh, bringing in Jim Berkman, spotlight on Burke Sports. Uh, kind of bring us a little bit of recap of the game. The uh, Why Missing Spartans down receiving the, uh, the trophies for the uh, uh, Section 2 championship. Jim, give us a little bit of tail of the tape. That was all ground game. Max Hurlman, 16 rushes, 145 yards, and of course those three big touchdowns. Uh, Evan Nadrowski, you know, it was like the, the thunder and lightning, so to speak. You know, that uh, Nadrowski's the thunder and Herleman's the lightning. But uh, Nadrowski, 22 carries, 76 yards. So the two of them did most of the pounding on the ground. Tranquillo also had 10 carries for 41 yards. Uh, all ground game. They, they threw the ball one time. You know, Allman ran the ball a couple times. He scrambled a couple times, but he only threw it one time. Uh, for Burks Catholic, Abdul McFoy ran the ball 11 times, 54 yards for him. Uh, but total on the ground, uh, total domination by Y missing. 23 to nothing, finishes off a perfect 10-0 season. Uh, they'll certainly be the top seed in the District 3 playoffs coming up. Uh, Burks Catholic, you know, they, they slipped a 6-4. and four. They will lose that top seed in the District playoffs, barring any uh, unforeseen 
scores from out in the York and in mid pen leagues. Um, but they, they should still get a home playoff in two weeks. They'll have a bye next week, and uh, we'll see what goes from there. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's interesting, too, uh, you know, looking at, uh, you know, what you just talked about. And, of course, you know, Hurlman and, and Tranquillo and, and the Drowski kind of three-headed monster there. And, uh, you know, looking at, you know, w- with uh, those guys, the yards per carry. And I think, you know, what you just said there with Abdul McFoy, you know, r- you know about 50 yards. Uh, you know, we didn't see anything, you know, as far as, you know, either McFoy or Larkin getting the opportunity to really, you know, break a right. big one. And, uh, you know, why missing? That's their game. You know, they want to, you know, they play great defense and that pounding ground and, uh, you know, being able to run the ball. And, you know, both these teams, that's really what they want to do, you know, and uh, don't want to put the ball in the air if they, uh, you know, don't have to. And uh, uh, I think both these teams are going to, you know, have a, uh, you know, nice opportunity here in the District 3 playoffs coming up. And it's going to be uh, fun to watch. And uh, I'm sure Bruce is down there and getting ready. And I think you kind of maybe uh, kind of put a little little teaser out there talking about the stats as far as who our player of the game will be. But uh, we'll have that official presentation, you know, coming up. And uh, But, again, you know, congratulations to Y Missing, you know, running the table here. Um, you know, with the, you know, in, in Burke section two, winning the, uh, the title tonight, the last night of the regular season in the backyard brawl, uh, you know, it's great momentum and it's, it's a great way to be heading into the playoffs. Sure. The confidence that they have right now, uh, not only being 10 and 0, but winning this game, uh, they just got presented with the two trophies, the, the BCIA section two trophy for this year, and also the backyard ball, uh, brawl trophy that they will have um, for we don't know how long. It might stay at Wyoming Missing for quite some time if, unless this rivalry uh, is renewed. And uh, by talking to Coach Wolfram before the game today, uh, this, this rivalry regular season will not be renewed in the next two years. No, you know, and I think, you know, and we kind of start talking about that. You know, at the, at the, uh, the beginning of, uh, you know, the season and, you know, for them, uh, for Burke's Catholic, you know, and, and for Wyomissing, uh, you know, it's looking at building those out-of-league schedules now. And, of course, you know, they'll be in different sections for next year. But building those out-of-league schedules that are really going to put you in the prime position. Again, these two programs expect to be in the playoffs each year. So it's, right. it's kind of building a schedule that's going to help you in getting that power ranking to, to, you know, and again, now more than ever in District 3, Having that top seed, you know, you, you keep winning now. You're gonna you're gonna host the district three finals without having the uh, without having the neutral sites now. And that's a huge advantage, Carrie, to be home for a district championship. Uh, you know, unprecedented. I, I, I love it. First of all, uh, it helps the athletic directors and district three committee to not have to worry about logistics. But uh, what a great advantage for the team and the fans. Okay, I think we're about ready to go down the field, and uh, Bruce will be having our uh, our ball girl player of the game uh, ball presentation coming up. All right, Bruce Badgley down on the field, the ball girl, BCTV Friday Night Football player of the game of the backyard brawl, Max Herlman. Congratulations, my man. Terrific win out there tonight. Um, you know, what was the feeling going into this game, uh, f- you know, for your team, you know, and being able to beat these guys? Uh, we, we came in confident, but, you know, we knew it was going to be a fight. And credit to BC, you know, they made it tough on us. Not a lot of teams make it, made us punt a lot. So, you know, they played a great game, and we just got the upper hand. You know, it was great, uh, you know, hearing Coach Wolfram out there, the fact of, you know, this is your first section championship since, what, 2015? This is the first section championship anybody on this team has been a part of. This is the last time anybody on this team will play BC, and, you know, we came out with a W. You can't ask for anything else. You know, you guys, uh, you know, you're talking about undefeated season. Now you've got the Keeley Wolfram Trophy for at least, what, two years now? I mean, so, you know, what was the feeling, you know, of the team going in on, you know, the the – you know how this game was amped up because it was the last time you were playing these guys for a couple of years. Yeah, we knew the stakes were high, and like I said, you know, this was the last chance anybody on this team was going to get to beat them. And you know, we came in and got the job done. We played Spartan football, and we got the win. 
Well, it sounds like you've earned a first round bye going into, uh, you know, next week. Listen, we wish you guys all the luck in the world in the District 3 playoffs, okay? Thank you. Back to you guys. Now, Max Hurlman, just a great athlete, fine young man, and, uh, you know, again, uh, talking about what this game meant, you know, as far as, uh, you know, the, the last time that anybody's, you know, on that field for why missing tonight's going to play BC. You know, we talked about the schedule a little bit, Jim, but, uh, you know, he said, uh, you know, we came out and we played Spartan football and, you know, great job on defense, incredible job, you know, with uh, the run game for them. They played Spartan football, got the W and, uh, you know, have the Section 2 title and uh, are in a prime position heading into the playoffs. You know, and let's give some credit out there to Jordan Allman, the quarterback of this team. Uh, in the off season, I, I, I got to speak to Jordan. He was running the third string offense. He, he was listed as a wideout, uh, split end. And, you know, in, in early in the season, uh, Zach Zekman went down with the, the knee injury and uh, uh, Coach Wolfram needed a backup quarterback. The second string quarterback was listed as a freshman. And, uh, you know, Jordan stepped in and took the reins of this team. And even though they don't pass the ball a lot, you, your quarterback is still your leader in that huddle. He takes the plays, he calls the plays, he calls the snap count. And, uh, you know, credit to Jordan Allman for running this Why Missing Spartans team to a 10-0 and record. And now, you know, a, a first round to top seed, district seed. No, and I don't think we can emphasize that enough, and that's a, a great point you brought up. And it, it's much more than just manage the game. You know, there were some times there, and I remember one time talking about it. You know, he had his shoulders squared, he's, he's sprinting out, didn't force anything, kind of brought it down, and uh, just – understands the games making heads up decisions senior leadership types of, of, of moves there and uh, it's been a huge part of their success and uh, again ball security and making the decisions you know he's just done a great job and uh, uh, kind of you know uh, <laughs> you know Bruce talked about it. it's kind of like this has gone you know in the blink of an eye this right. season and sure uh, is. you know just being able to work with all you guys you've done an incredible job feeding me with the uh, the stats and the scores all season long you know and again you know with our our production guys and uh making it easy i just gotta throw the headset on and to you know bruce of course you know uh spearheading a lot of our efforts and you know w with the play-by-play -play, you know it's just been our honor our privilege to you know be able to highlight a lot of these great burks county teams and also get to see teams from you know, other parts of the state, you know, out of state, you know, and, and things like that, you know, over, you know, the course of the season, it's just been uh, phenomenal. And uh, for all the for all the fans out there who have tuned in watching on BC TV or, you know, caught us on YouTube watching from all over the country, you know, we just greatly appreciate it and, uh, you know, hope to uh, be able to do this again, continue it moving forward and be able to continue to bring you, you know, uh, Berks County football and Berks County uh um, you know, games and teams and just be able to, you know, put out, you know, all the positive stuff that these young men have been, you know, doing uh, on the field and, uh, you know, for the, the communities and the schools. And again, so many of these guys are just, you know, friends, you know, from little on up and are just so positive and encouraging of each other. It's just neat to see. And for our last game, just to see the atmosphere, standing room only, you know, folks all around the, the fence, around the outside of the track, you know, all, everything that was at stake was just uh, was, was, was awesome. So I, I, I'm seeing something, uh, Kerry, that I really enjoy. These teams, we talk about the rival, the backyard, backyard rivalry. What I'm seeing down here on the track is players from Y Missing and Burke's Catholic taking pictures with each other. And that's amazing. You know, the, on the field, they're battling. The, it, you're not my friend when I'm on the field. Before the game, after the game, you know what? They're good buddies. Yeah. You know, and, and they have a respect for each other, and uh, I admire it. Congratulations, Why Missing Burks Catholic. Uh, your players are very respectful. Great job. Well, and best of luck to, uh, you know, Coach uh, Wolfram, Coach uh, Keeley, and uh, both of these teams heading into the playoffs. And I uh, uh, kind of don't want to end, but uh, kind of got to – bring it to a close and wrap up here so you know for jim and, and bruce for our whole crew as carrie moyer saying thank you for joining us this season and thank you for being a part of uh uh burks uh, county football here on bc tv thank you bc tv and all of our sponsors that made this possible and uh, uh for all those teams moving on good luck in the playoffs and uh thank you for joining us